listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. So they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will do. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will do. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses and they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. <coughs> he will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers he will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. No. He will take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and attendants. Your men servants and maid servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take for his own. He will take a tenth of your flocks, and you yourselves will become his slaves. No! When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen. And the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Respecting all faiths, we call upon your name, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We seek your face and approval, crucified Savior. We ask that our sins be forgiven, that our prayers will be received by you. Our praise acceptable to you. We bless your holy name. We praise you for all creation. We praise you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We praise you for the salvation of the cross. We thank you for the establishment of America. We thank you for Texas. Yeah. We ask that you, one and living God, forgive us for the abomination of abortion. And that you give us the grace to fight with indignation for the lives of the least among us, the unborn. We pray for revival in our nation, that we may truly become one nation under God, dedicating to seeing that its very existence is for your supremacy. We ask that you protect our military, men and women. Give them the power to vanquish those that would do us harm and to bridge the liberty that you have given us. We ask that by your grace, our elected officials see themselves as your servants first, our servants second, and refrain from serving their own self-interest. Grant us victory on the battlefield of truth. Defy and defeat the foes of liberty. Stand against the agents of tyranny. For your word says that you are the personification of liberty. We received your admonition of the dangers of governmental power delivered by your prophet Samuel. This government has not taken more than 10%. It's taken more than 10% because this government thinks it is you. This government thinks it is God. And we defy it. We say you are the one true living God.
unified as a people. We stand against that abuse of power and blasphemy. Grant us victory at the ballot box. And if we are prey to miss, we know that this prayer has been rejected by you, and rightly so. Yet, Master, we know that in 1 John chapter 5, your word tells us that if we pray your will, that you will hear us and give us what we've asked for. Our faith says that we have prayed your will, and we thank you in advance for granting us the planks of our petition. And now, Master, hear our battle cry. We have no king but Christ Jesus. Amen. In your name we live. In your name we shall serve. In your name we shall die. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.